guitar and excel c major a minor pentatonic scale fret number seven fingering get ready and some coffee you're gonna need it because unlocking the fretboard is kind of like that time i got locked out of my house which was a problem but after a while i finally figured it out which wasn't very helpful considering i really needed to figure a way in i mean obviously i was able to get out with little to no figuring getting out was the easy part However, I needed to call a locksmith to figure my way in. And now, I get to be like that savior, the locksmith. But with like, helping you figure your way into the fretboard. So you're no longer out in the cold, scratching at the wood in a vain hope that your dog will suddenly learn how to let you in. But then totally forget how he did it right afterwards. So he can't let himself out to terrorize the mailman tomorrow. So anyways, let's get into it. God, you're home. I'm Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but did so in prior presentations. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you could start back there. However, you don't necessarily need access to this workbook if looking at this from a music theory standpoint because we'll simply use it as a tool to map out the fretboard, give us the notes, the scale, the chords that we're focused in on. If you do have access to this workbook though, there's a bunch of tabs on down below, including the OG orange tab representing the original worksheet we put together in a prior section, mapping out the entire fretboard, giving us our entire musical alphabet in letter format, number format, combining letter and number format, having a key that can be adjusted with the green cell adjusting the scale that we are in in the worksheets on the right which provide the notes in the scale the chord constructions from those notes and interval information we're now looking at the key of c we started out looking at open position from the standpoint of constructing the uh, chords and those are going to be all of the yellow tabs at this time so we started with the one chord the c chord mapped it out open position frets one through three then we went to the four chord the f major the five chord the g major back to the two chord the d minor the three chord the e minor the six chord the a minor and then the seven the diminished then we wanted to jump to the middle and think about the middle of the fretboard, not from chord constructions, but this time starting from a scale standpoint. And we started on fret number five, and we looked at it in detail from a pentatonic standpoint and major scale standpoint. And then we saw how we can possibly tie in uh, to our open positions, targeting a C, targeting the F, targeting the D minor, targeting the E, targeting the A. Now, we want to move to the next position on the fretboard. So we started here on uh, position number five in the middle. Well, well, we talked about open position here in terms of chords, and then we jumped into our scales, and we jumped into the middle of the fretboard so that we can think about the middle in terms of scales, and then later on, we'll do the caged system to tie these things together and think about it more in depth with chords. So we're kind of overlapping the same stuff, but looking at it from different angles. Now, the question is, once we start in the middle of the guitar, which way should we go? We could go up the guitar, or we can go back to the guitar uh, behind it, because we started and we called this position one or the G shape here, and we're gonna continue on going up the guitar because we've already learned a little bit on this uh, back position in frets zero through three with the open chord positions. So we're gonna go up the guitar, and then after we've continued up the guitar, we will then go back uh, behind this position one, number one, and kind of relearn what we did over here from a chords standpoint, but now in a scale standpoint. And then we'll do the caged system, which means we'll take the chords stuff that we learned here and push them up again and talk about the whole thing basically again, but this time emphasizing uh, the, the caged system, which is basically based on uh, the chords. So that's what we're going to do now. We'll, we'll populate this shape and then we'll talk about the fingering of the pentatonic. And then next time we'll do a similar thing, but then be looking at uh, the full major shape in the second position. So last time we left off here. So I want to just copy this sheet over and make the adjustments just so you can see uh, if you're following, you know, sheet by sheet here. So I'm going to pull down control, drag this to the right of the OG, 
and there's our starting point and I'm going to call this the scale fret 7 fingering tab and then I'll make that maybe yellow or the light blue okay so what we're going to do is I'm going to unhide some cells between I and AK so we can see the next position right click and unhide so this is what we had last time I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it over to here so this is going to be our, our new position now there it is I'm going to make this yellow so we can see the overlap I'm going to go to the to the uh, home let's go to the shape tab so my voice is cracking let's go to the outline and make it yellow so there we have it pull these down for now and so there is our next shape so note that it's going to start up we're getting kind of high up on the guitar neck at this point because it's going to start over once we get to uh, the 12. but i'm going to hide from uh, right after the shape on fret 11 back to our worksheet so here's our worksheet i'm going to right click and hide so there we have it now notice we have side by side here the major worksheet and then the over here we have the minor uh the related minor which is going to be or the o aeolian mode if you want to call it that the six is now the one when we consider this pentatonic shape those are the two modes that are everything is included we'll talk more about that in a second now let's just do the worksheet down here this is the entire scale uh down below that has the pentatonic and then the uh, and then well the major then the pentatonic on top of it let's actually redo this worksheet at this time as well so I'm going to just redo this whole thing I'm going to try this again I'm going to unhide from K to AK and let's say unhide and then let's take this whole thing this time and I'm going to hide from here to my worksheet right click and hide and then let's I'll just do the whole thing. I'll make this a little bit smaller and I'm going to remove the conditional formatting and then just basically redo it here. So I'm going to say, let's take this whole thing and then go to the home tab, conditional formatting, clear the rules, clear the rules, uh, rules duh, duh, are cleared. I'm going to clear the rules over here. No rules, but it'll be anarchy without any rules but I know but we're, we're gonna make new rules like right after we clear out the other rules don't worry it's gonna be okay Cra craziness is gonna happen people are gonna start robbing grocery stores and stuff so I don't can't get any food if you stop all the rules okay we're gonna put rules we're gonna put rules back in here hold on a second so we're gonna say let's take this whole thing and we're going to say home tab drop down and then this is going to be a c let's make it all blue to start off with this is going to be our major and c major uh just like we did before so i'm going to fill make the underline the base blue the bottom part blue and then we're going to say d everything is going to be blue custom blue 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 and then we're going to say do 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 make uh, an e make that blue do 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 and then boom we're going to go to the f make that blue boom 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 and then the g we're going to the g we're going to make that blue and there it is and then again we're going to say the a and we will make that blue okay and then one more time on the b so we'll make that blue duh, duh, duh. so now you can see this is going to be our the same scale we were working at before and now we're going to have this here in our new shape this would be the entire scale not just the five notes but having the whole seven notes and let's make this one yellow so this is our outline on the yellow all right so now i'm just going to put the pentatonic on top of it and make it the green notes <clears throat> and the pentatonic being three out of the six notes will fit on top of it perfectly 
So we're going to say now let's, we'll put on top of it the green ones, which will fit on top perfecto, just like Mundo would do it. My friend Mundo is a perfectionist. So I like to say that's where I came up with this phrase that no one's ever said before, perfecto Mundo, because it's perfecto, just like my perfectionist friend Mundo would do it. So then we're going to say this one's going to be an E, and then it's going to be an E, and then the next one is going to be a G, and then and then the next one finally will be the B. Oh, not the B, an A. <laughs> uh, okay, hopefully I got that correct. So now we have those so now we have those being the pentatonic here was our classic shape the pentatonic last time and so now you can kind of see how it overlaps here and we can see uh the pentatonic as well as the added two shapes now being blue okay we'll get into that more next time now let's go back up to the top and just consider the pentatonic itself so i'm going to hide from l on over to the AJ, right click and hide. And then I'm going to uh, go into full screen mode. So there we have it. Let's get this as large as we can in the full screen mode. It's basically pretty good right there, I think. Okay, so last time here was our shape. So that's in position five. So we've learned basically in open position we've learned this whole kind of space over here but we learned it with chords and if we put all those chords together we'll basically end up with that with the major shape that we saw down here the blue one and so then we moved up to starting in position five which is a bit of a jump but it's a great place to start your pentatonics and we learned you know the classic pentatonic shape and then we learned the major shape on top of it so now we can go to sh what we would call i would call shape number two now remember defining these shapes can be a bit of a trick a lot of people will call this first shape like a g type shape it's not because it's always going to be a g chord but because you have this g shape over here and you can imagine that if you stack around it the added couple notes a g has three notes in it two more notes is the pentatonic so if I was to move that up here, I could say, well, that now is a C because I'm looking at this, duh, duh, uh, duh, 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 that's going to be a C, but I, I can say it's a G shape similar to that G shape. And I can then tag my chord on, on or my pentatonic shape on top of it by saying, adding those two notes. And then I can add on top of that, my major shape if I want to, but be careful because although this this structure this shape is unique to the pentatonic and the chord it's not unique to the major shape once we have seven notes you can have multiple shapes that this fits into so that's what i mean by you can label the shape as though it's the chord which will then still be unique to the pentatonic and then you can say that i'm trying to label the major shape based on that even though it will fit into that chord will fit into multiple of these major kind of shapes so then when i move up uh, to this one so now we're basically we have this overlap that's what this little chart down here is trying to show that we have the overlap between uh, these two positions between these two and then we're going to jump up to this position now the one of the benefits of jumping up here is we're not jumping up notice again i'm not going from like here's my four string position i'm not going from pointer to pinky here's my pinky and then starting where my pointer is from the last position I'm starting in the middle, right? I'm only going up two frets. Here's my my first position. I'm just going to go up to here. And that's basically where our next position will start. Now, on the pentatonic, it's a little bit weird on the second shape because we don't have that B. So I'm actually going to start here. But on the major shape, these two, you know, it would be connected there. Okay, so that's going to be, <clears throat> that's the, the general idea. And now we, we're in the second shape. So let's actually move this down now. I'm going to move this down and take it out so we can just focus on that one shape. And then, so this one, we can call that a G shape. So we can call this, I would call it shape number two, which is fairly common, but not a universal term. You can also call it basically an E shape. And you can see the E 
if you were to say it, let's do this with the reds, I think, because the yellow was my, if I took my E shape, so now it's a C chord, but it's got our E shape, which looks like this, dun, dun, and this is a, a classic major bar chord type of shape. So you can see that inside of it. So we're going, we're going, and then doing our shape right there, which would give us that C uh, major chord. So you can, you can tag it. Uh, that's one way to kind of memorize this shape. So then if you're playing this to try to learn the fingering of it, then obviously the starting point will typically be that we're going to be playing it up and down. That's what everybody basically starts off doing. I'm going to make one more of these, but make it like orange. Could I make it orange? I'm getting crazy on my colors. I want to go and make the fill outline orange. So it's something different. So now, so you could do the whole shape from top to bottom, of course, but then you also want to kind of learn, I would pick up little pieces of the shape and, and try to learn little pieces. And as you do it, you want to get your mind into thinking, what exactly am I playing here? Am I playing something that I'm thinking about in the key of C? Or do I think about it as one of the related, as the related minor? Or am I thinking about it in uh, one of the different modes? Now, remember that on the pentatonic, all these notes will only fit into basically the C and its related minor the six right because these other chords have been constructed they've all been constructed from seven notes not five notes but it just so happens it works out that that the one and the six are the two that fit perfectly into this pentatonic so it's common to think about the pentatonic as related to the c or its related minor now it's also common remember to think about any of these other ones if i go to a d like this for example then I still might be using my pentatonic shapes, but then adding the note that I need to, instead of switching my mind to, to going to the complete, uh, the complete major scale, a lot of people will still think about themselves in a pentatonic, but then say, I'm going to add the note that I need to add the F if I want to, if I want to add basically that note in this case, because the F is not in the pentatonic. And that way you can kind of keep your mind in the pentatonic and just make adjustments to it, which actually works fairly well because the pentatonic is a more flexible uh, scale oftentimes. Or you can kind of switch your mind to thinking now I'm thinking in a major scale as opposed to the pentatonic. So we can play this basically uh, top to bottom. A lot of people, when they do that, you, you're going to start your fingers oftentimes if you were using your standard positioning, you'd want as much as possible one finger on each fret. So it's, you're going to be tempted to start here like this with a C. It's not actually bad to do that because later on you will do that most of the time, a lot of the time, because that's going to be the root if you're thinking about yourself in C major. And, it's, and you can get hammer-ons and stuff like this, and you can reach up to this string up here for the third. So in practice, you'll often kind of do that. But if you're trying to keep your hand in position to have one finger per fret, which is probably the best starting point, then you're going to be wanting to play this with uh, your middle finger. So and also note, if I start on this note right here, I'm going to think of myself as playing in the key of C because I'm starting from a C. If you're going to think of yourself playing in the key of A, then you probably want to start here, right? And then move into your shape. Because by, by doing that, you're starting your progression on an A. And even though they're all the same notes, they're, it's going to sound more like an A and you can kind of get your register of mind to say, okay, now I'm playing an A scale. So it's the same kind of thing. You're still going to be just playing the scale up and back. But if you just put that little piece of information in your mind, you're like, okay, I'm start, I'm playing basically a C versus I'm playing an A minor. You could do the same thing by starting on a different mode, right? You could, you could basically say, and I'm playing in the Dorian mode and start on the D and what you really want to do is start all of your lines to begin and end on the D. So as you go through this, for example, here I'm thinking about myself in the key of C. I'm going boom, boom. That's my first line. And let's actually pull this down so we could see it one by one. And then we're going to here. And I'm going to do, I can't do it without my pick. Boom, boom. And then we're going to the next line is going to be uh, boom, boom. Now notice when I ended off there, 
you're at the end of the sea. So you might first, you know, you think of that in your mind that you're that you're playing around again. So then I'm, if I'm starting out again, you might even play this one as the one again. And then we're going to go boom, boom. I'm switching to this finger now. And then the last bit here. Now that's probably not the, uh, the best spot to end with because you, you kind of want to end on a D. So you might end back and then end it back by going back to the C here. Why? Because I'm trying to keep all of my lines so that I begin and end them on the C. So you kind of, so you want to basically target the C here and then basically go through your scale in such a way that you're ending and beginning on a C. So if I'm going to start from the bottom, I might start on a C, go back up and back down, right? So that I'm, so that I'm clearly have my ear in the key of C. And then from here, down and then from here we go down and then from here we go down and then you might end it there because now I've ended on a on a C again and then I'm going to keep going down might start it down to here and then next line and then the next line do do and now I've ended on the C. So, so, so that, that, just that little piece of information. I used to, when I first started doing this, I didn't really do that because I had this thing when I first started playing. Uh, I wanted to kind of, I was kind of experimenting if I could, <laughs> if I could learn everything with just shapes, relative kind of shapes, with having very little musical learning all of the, all of the notes. I just thought that was kind of interesting at the time. And it is kind of interesting, but that's not the way you actually want to do it typically because if you just introduce, you need to know at least your targeting notes that you're starting and ending on. And if you play your scale saying, okay, I can see that I'm playing in the key of C and I start and end on a C, you're going to start to tune your ear to kind of feel, <laughs> know what that sounds like. And you're, going to, and you're going to be doing your fingering so that you know not just the shape from top to bottom. I don't just know that it's called the two shape right of of a pentatonic i know i know where to start it and end it to at least make it in the key of c right and then we can start targeting our notes more when we get into the uh when we we could start targeting each of these notes within that scale now just a quick reminder on the rules for the pentatonic the pentatonic are it's a, it's a seven note scale that we remove it's a five note scale because we took the seven note scale and removed the the two notes or you can think of the seven note scale as as a five note scale plus the two notes right so and when we look at in in a position the thing that's great about it in these chunky positions that we're breaking out the fretboard into is you have certain rules those rules being that we never have on one string more than four frets wide of a position that's one rule notice I, that's perfect for your hand position so i'm not i'm never stretching out here which which gets very difficult for people that don't have really large hands. My hands aren't huge. That's a stretch for me to do. So that's one benefit of, of a pentatonic type of shape position. Another kind of rule that you can think of is that we're going to have no notes that are going to be right next to each other. Those are the ones that have been removed, right? So there's we don't see any notes, any half steps. So we know when I'm playing a pentatonic, like I know it's not going to be that, right? I know it's like if I'm starting on a pentatonic here, it's going to be a jump to here or it's going to be a long jump to there. So that's another thing that's useful to know. Uh, we know that uh, that we're only going to have basically two kinds of steps once I plant my first finger. Once I plant my first finger on this side, then then it's either going to be a a short position, like you could think of it kind of like Morse code, right? It's either going to be a short or a long, right? So it's either going to be, this is the short, it's it's one whole step or two notes up, and this is the long, which are going to be uh, skipping two notes, right? So this is going to be two, two, one, two, three steps up, one, two steps up, right? So this so that there's my short, there's the long, there's the short, I mean, there's the long, there's another short, there's the short, there's the short, right? So, and these positions will actually kind of move together. You can see that that they're kind of clumping uh, together here. There's there's the two shorts, 
there's the two shorts, there's in our prior position, the longs, and then here are the longs basically in this position. So you can start to memorize that shape as basically kind of a, a jigsaw type puzzle, which gets pretty easy, you know, pretty easier to visualize than when you put in those half steps and you have kind of those rules that can help you out a little bit as you go. Now, the next thing we, we might want to do is look at the uh, look at it in terms of an A. Now, if I was to play the same thing as an A, I probably don't want to start playing on the C, right? I probably want to start on my A. I want to get that A bass in my ear and now think, okay, I'm playing in the key of A minor now. That's why when people learn this first shape, they play in A minor because they're starting on that A. And, and that's why a lot of people learn A or one reason instead of, a, instead of in the key of C. But if I started on the C, then I can use the same shape and say now it's in the C major. Th that was on our prior shape. Now if I'm playing this shape, then if I start here, I'm basically playing in the key of C major. But if I want to switch my ear to, to continue the shape, it's the same notes. The same notes were in this shape as in this shape. I can play it in C major or in A minor. But if I start on that C, it's going to sound like it's going to be in C major, which is fine if that's what you want to do. But if you want to count it up like you're in the minor, then you probably want to go back and grab that B and then move up, right? There's the one and then move up. So, and then we just go right back up the thing again. And then I'm just going to go do, I'll do this slowly again, just so we can see the shape. Boom. And then we can go to here and we'll pick up the A and you can see that ends kind of the first round and then you can go through it again the a to the c and then the d to the e and then when you go up to these high ones you're going to be tempted and oftentimes i do this i'm you know i'll switch up to this finger because that's easier to play but if you want to be in position you want to use these fingers kind of depends what you're doing if you're doing more bluesy kind of stuff you're going to start to change those rules because it's not just about playing the note it's about doing something with it oftentimes so so if you want to if i want to get a like a, a hammer on it's a lot easier to do that not from the pinky but from the pointer to the pinky so you're going to start to do things like starting up here that's why i'm kind of hesitating to go too fast because i'm going to do things that are not exactly the proper thing but if you're down here and you start to bend the strings a little bit it's a whole lot easier to do that if you shift your fingering up. So this is the proper way to do it. But if you're trying to do a hammer on or do something fast down here, then you're probably going to be move, shifting your finger up a little bit. So don't really be afraid to do that. Some people will get very technical on that. It depends what you're doing. If you're, I mean, I suppose if you're, I'm not a, I don't have any background in cl like classical guitar or anything, you know, but if, if they were, if in a, I would think that in a classical guitar, they would want the f position to be more proper most of the time and have your finger back so that you can reach all of the notes that you need to reach. Whereas if you're doing something that's more like a, like a bluesy kind of thing, then you're going to probably do things that are unorthodox so that you can get a different sound because you're now you're trying to spend a lot more time possibly doing something with the with the note as opposed to just trying to make it ring out beautifully right so uh any case so you 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 end up switching your fingering up a little bit so so that's the main thing now you could do that with any of the other modes too right i can play the i can play the same thing up from the d and i can say well now i'm in a dorian well, if I'm going to think of myself in Dorian, I'm going to I'm going to say the same thing. It's all the same notes that I'm in D Dorian, but I'm not going to start on the C. Then I'm going to start on this D and then I'm going to play it up and I'm going to try to focus in on uh, the D's as as I go up as I go up the strings. So that's one thing uh, to keep in mind. Then, of course, you, 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 you can practice when you practice this. Most people are going to practice from top to bottom, and you probably will do it sometimes when you're not thinking about what you're just practicing the fingering. But then you might practice little bits of it to get to, get to it more musically. So if I'm seeing myself in the key of C, I might start, I might start saying, okay, what can I do with this shape? I could do, I have a double stop up here because I can play these two strings at the same time. 
and like I can start, here's my A over here, so I can, maybe I can go back to that sometimes, right? Here's my power chord from C to G, so notice I'm cheating up here, I'm playing it out of position, because that's what I, I typically do, right? So I'm going to go up and here, and I'm going to say, okay, there's a, I can play those two, I can play a power chord. We've also got the third back here, so you, if you play this little shape, you've got the one and the three, so you've got your one and five up there. I'm trying not to hit some notes that are in the major shape because all these notes would be in the major and just stick to the pentatonic here. Uh, you can also go back and pick up some notes back here in the shape that we learned before and lead them in. So then we can then go down to the next one and learn it bit by bit. So notice that as I go to the next bit right here, I've got this, these. If I start playing it like that, it's going to start to sound like I'm in something in the key of E, right? Would be, be, would you, which you could do because you can think of yourself as the related mode of C major that starts on an E. But if you want to keep your sound that if you're in the key of C, you, you want to kind of be mindful of those things. I could start, here's my C down here. Now, if I want to do some double stops with this, I'm probably going to cheat on my shape, right? I'm probably not going to play this with my pinky up top. I'm probably going to jump up here and play it like this so that I can get those two strings at the same time. You're probably going to do that if you want to do some bending or anything like that as well. Other way, of course, you can keep yourself in the key of C if, that, if that's what you want to play. Is you can start with this little shape, which gives you the root and the third. And now that your ears in the key of C, then focus in on this bit. And then possibly end with that same little structure. Or you can go back into your prior shape, find a C down here. Practice some sliding up and back and that kind of stuff, and then and then obviously you could do this on uh, each of each of your shapes. You can go down to each of your shapes, restrict your position so that you're fingering you know just that little bit. If you go down here, notice this shape uh, again. You'd want to say, okay, am I playing the key of C? Where's going to be the C to pick up? The C is actually way down here, so it might be a little bit more difficult to kind of keep that in the key. Uh, of C since that's like the highest note in here but if you're like notice I kind of cheated down here because again if you want to keep yourself in position you'd be doing something like that but oftentimes I'll be moving up here and I'll move my finger up because that's just so much easier to do if you're trying to do something else like bend these or something like that so again that might not be the most proper thing to do but you can play with your own methods in terms of when do you want to keep your fingers in position and when do you think it's appropriate to move up so that you can you can bend and and do things like that it's going to be largely dependent on what kind of style that you that you want to play but there is value to thinking of it like i'm trying to play everything with each finger in its place. That's useful to do. That's probably the best place to start. Not, not the place I started, but probably the best place to start and then start to mess up your fingering in a logical way to do exactly what you're trying to do, uh, what you're trying to do with it. Now, then of course you can go back up and you can do the same kind of thing in like in the key of A. So if I'm thinking of myself in the key of A, then I might start back here and then move into my shape. So then I'm ending like right here. So I'm in A minor, I'm in the related minor, right? So now I'm gonna be over here. So I'm playing around this A that's, that's gonna be right in here. We'll talk more about the targeting just like we did last time in future presentations, but Anytime you're kind of noodling around and just kind of learning it, if you could, if you play it a little bit more musically and know the note that you're kind of targeting around, even as you chunk this down, it would be good. Now, obviously, last time we we went all the way from open position and then to, to position starting in fret five. You could start from open position 
and then jump over here to fret 7, but that's a little bit more difficult to do. Sometimes we're going to start possibly to talk about lines, pathways that we can use to go from possibly open position to this position. We also want to be thinking about the connections here between, you know, these these uh, two positions, 5 or the, the, the fifth fret or what I would call position 1 or the G-shaped position and position 2 and the E-shaped position. So we'll do that. We'll do that more uh, in following presentations. Next time we'll go in and we'll put this, we'll put the added two notes to get the full major scale, or maybe next time we'll talk about the intervals and then we'll do the major scale. And, uh, and then eventually we'll get to those targeting of the notes and trying to find a pathway from open position to position one to then position two.